Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm reviewing and comparing these Cobalt self-adjusting pliers. They're actually self-adjusting wrench pliers, but they just call them self-adjusting pliers, which is an inappropriate naming, I believe. This is part number 0794-9270 and picked these up uh, on a gift card I got for Christmas. And I thought it was interesting. And we're going to be comparing them to other types of either wrench pliers or self-adjusting pliers. And what we have here is some rigid rubble grips we're going to compare to, as well as the Nipex wrench pliers. And I'll try to be as quick as possible. I know my reviews get a bit wordy, but I have a lot to say. And there'll be two categories. One is the engineering and design, and two is the build quality. These things were $20 normal price, on sale for $15 for the pair of them. And their build quality shows that price range. Not the best build quality at all. Actually, it's uh, the forgings are pretty rough on them. But then there's also the engineering or design and usability of the pliers, which is far different from how well this particular set were made. Obviously, if Nipex made a set like these, they would be beautiful. And they do work pretty well. Some One nice feature I like about these is they are spring-loaded, just like the Robo Grips here, except for that they have a lock. So they have this little rocker switch, and you flip it, and the plier has a spring-loaded clock spring in here. And when you close it, you can just rock the little button forward, and it keeps them shut. So I kind of thought that was neat. Now, how these are both a combination of the Robo Grips and the Nipex wrench pliers is like the robo grips here when you get to a something of a particular size this move the 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 back cam the, it pivots off this back point and so it allows the jaw to move very far but as soon as it encounters any resistance the angle of that arm forces this upper uh handle to move forward when that happens it engages if you can see there engages those dog teeth so if we put something in here this will move forward engage those dog teeth and once that happens the pivot point moves from back here to up here and that's where you get uh, more leverage and actual usability but even with the rigids there's still quite a distance from the jaw to the pivot point itself these are also the rigids are directional if, we, if you can if i can get the camera to cooperate here and i can get the appropriate silhouette there we go you can see that the teeth on the rigids are actually pointed in the direction the ones up here are pointing this way the ones down here are pointing that way so as you grip something it's designed for you to press on this i would say the moving handle you know the moving jaw as opposed to the fixed jaw and so as you put more pressure on it now i'm not using my finger anymore but you squeeze and then that jaw locks up and then as you put pressure on it the more pressure you put on this handle, the tighter it squeezes, and it works pretty well. Now, these rigid robo grips are really made for more rounded objects, as we can see. If we, you know, use a fastener, we can see that's really only gripping on the edges. So these, although they work on fasteners, aren't really quite designed for it. They're more for round objects in kind of general use, and they work reasonably well, although you don't get a ton of leverage. It's about the same amount as any kind of normal set of pliers that we have, might have up here. With the Cobalts and with the Nipex, there the jaws actually move in parallel. So when you grip something, as we can see here, it grips across the entire flats of the surface. And just like the Robo grips, as you put pressure on, this handle will move forward. Inside, back there, we can see that there's a series of teeth. And interestingly, they do use a very high precision. Uh, hardened steel uh, dog in there to engage the the forging so I thought that was at least one properly pro probably because you know, forging a little piece like that and having the necessary definition to engage the teeth just wasn't working out so it does seem to lock up pretty well but you do have parallel gripping surfaces and some pretty uh, aggressive teeth and then as it locks up then you have this second compound leverage, just like the Robo Grips there. The difference is, is that the lever is different. It's from the distance from this pin right here to this point, which is f far shorter than the leverage point of even the little Robo Grips, even though this, they're about the same size set of pliers. So you get just much more leverage action. That's exactly how these Nipex works. They're the same way, although you have a push button, so you have to manually adjust them. 
to the range that you want. And then this handle with its really, with the, the nub being very close to the pivot point gives you a ton of leverage. And that's one of the reasons that these type, these nip X's are popular is because they work like a wrench. They grab the flats of the fastener like so all the way across in parallel and you get a huge amount of additional leverage. And there's a few YouTube reviews of these nip X's. I've even reviewed them and they do work pretty well. My comment was the fact that you do have to f fidget around and uh, manually adjust them. So when I saw these cobalts, I thought, well, that's an interesting take on those, that design because now we have a set which is spring-loaded and then automatically will adjust and give you the same level of compound action. If we take a look at the build quality, you can see the forging is pretty rough, uh, not very even. There is a huge amount of play in the jaw. Uh, it's just all over the place. Same thing on the lower ones. And so that's why I'm evaluating both by, based on engineering as well as build quality. The build quality is, these are cheap. Uh, they advertise them as being nickel chrome, so not even chrome vanadium. They advertise here on the packaging, parallel draws, grab the flats of the fastener, uh, reducing chance of rounding. They don't mention that the really aggressive vice grip style teeth on them will, of course, chew up the fastener. May not round it, but it will chew it up. Where, of course, even the quality on these old uh, American-made Robo grips is they're pretty nice. The jaws are actually really pretty tight in this uh, setup here, as we can see. And even on the Nipex here, Nipex, Nipex, not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but even on the Nipex, it's, they're still loose. And that's the nature of this tool. I mean, they're designed to replace adjustable wrenches and so work in very gritty and dirty environments. So they're always going to have uh, more play than you might expect. Uh, otherwise, they'll just start to jam up as soon as they get a little bit of corrosion and dirt and grit on them. And it does allow them to work smoothly. And then, of course, on the Nipex, they're more designed for fasteners because they don't have any teeth on the jaws. The jaws are also very narrow, relatively speaking. We can see that here, uh, how much wider the jaws and the cobalt are. So these are a bit more, would work better for more general uses. So one of the great things about these parallel jaw pliers is uh, a couple things. I'll demonstrate these on a faster, but one is if you have a piece of, say you have a piece of metal like this that has that band and you want to try to bend it back. Well, using normal pliers, the issue is, is when you grip it, it doesn't really grip across the whole surface. So when you bend it, sometimes, you know, uh, it's, it doesn't bend quite as expected because of depending on where the pressure points are. That's what makes pliers such as these much nicer is when you're gripping, you know that you're at least attempting to grip across the whole flat. So when you want to bend something straight again, like so, and a little bit of twist here, right on the corner, you have a better effect because you're supporting the section that's straight, you're supporting along the entire section, and then you can put the tips right where you need something to be bent back. And come on, camera. It starts to uh, bend it straight without causing additional bends that you have to compensate for. I will have to say that the cobalts do work pretty smoothly, and when you do grab something, I mean, they have a huge amount of leverage, just like the Nipex, like this plastic thing. We can just easily crush it. I'm not putting hardly any hand pressure on that. Really, uh, as far as how, that, how they function and the engineering, they do work well, and you can really grip something quite solidly. All right, I'm gonna finish up. I'm gonna demonstrate these on a few fasteners, and they're gonna be a little bit larger size, so it's a little easier to see how the jaws fit and uh, the general properties of these. All right, we're over here at my demonstration uh, nuts. These are on what was an old manual tinsel testing rig uh, that I use as a press. I don't have a big uh, crossbeam press, but I do have this. Uh, and there is something to be said by using a tinsel, an old tinsel rig as a press because uh, the rigidity is not even comparable to shop presses. These plates are 10 inches by 12 inches by 2 inches thick. Uh, that's rigidity. Supported by four huge bolts, uh, one at each corner. Uh, it's been a real pleasure using this as a press because uh, there is no flex in it, period. And so everything that you're doing, you're applying the force directly on what you're trying to do. So many people have used presses and are pressing out big bushings and all this stuff. And the presses slam and make a big bang and pop uh, because this tension builds up until it gets to a point where it all releases. This doesn't. 
This things just creak and moan and move. There is no jumping or sudden releases of tension uh, because there, none of this bends. And someday I'll make a review of it. So anyway, we have a fastener here. We'll do, it's an inch and a half fastener, so it should work pretty well. So how these work is you put the pressure on the what we'll call the moving jaw. And like on this rigid, they attempt to make it work on hex fasteners. And it actually, the robo grip will grip in parallel. And it does work pretty well, but because the pivot point is so far away from the jaws, you just don't get a ton of grip strength. So even though they're okay, they're not the greatest, and they do kind of want to slip a little bit. But they're, you know, they're generally okay. I don't use the rubber grips very often. Now with the Nipex here, you just have a much more leverage, so you get much more clamping force. And the same deal, this is the moving jaw, and you put it on the fastener, and because it has so much more leverage and because of the pivot angle is different, how the direction that you press on the handle is more related to the direction of force that you're applying to the jaw. On the robo grip, you're pressing this way and the force is kind of at an angle. That's why they don't grip as hard. Where the design, like say of this Nipex, you press that way. And the force is almost exactly 180 degrees. It's about, I'd say, 150 degrees. So it makes it much more effective. And when you get them grip, uh, Nipex gripped, you don't even have to hold on to what is known as the fixed jaw. If I move over here so you can see the handle, when I apply this and then start applying torque, I don't even have to touch that other handle and you could break the fastener. That's one of the reasons people like them is because of something as simple as changing directions of force. And of course, the leverage. Surprisingly enough, these cobalts do the very same thing as those Nipexes, but with the advantage of self adjusting like the Robo Grip. As soon as you put it on, they are spring loaded, so you have to have a little bit more force, but they do the same thing. My direction of force is this way, the jaw is moving up at about 150 degrees. And I can show that here when I put them on this fastener. You have to apply a little bit more force because they are spring-loaded. Once you do that, then you can grip and just hold the back handle and break the fastener. So they do indeed work like the Nipexes. They're just not $50. If they were, they would definitely be uh, a similar build quality. And so that was really the purpose of the review is now uh, it appears Lowe's has what is known as poor man's Nipex wrench pliers. And to tell you the truth, adjusting these isn't so bad. You kind of get used to just pressing the button with one hand and moving the jaw with the other, and, and they're okay. But it is convenient that these are self-adjusting. I like the lock switch, but it's just the fact that they're self-adjusting. So you get the same advantages of the Nipex, but without having to fiddle with pressing a button. You can just go up to the fastener, grab it, and then get the same high leverage, high grip amount of force and they have serrated jaws, so it's actually a nice addition because I can have the smooth jaws while I'm working on brass fittings or anything like that so you don't mar them up. And then for other more general uses, you can get still get the same engineering design, but with a real aggressive jaw. And in the situations, more, I would say, dirty or ugly situations that you would use these in, especially since they're cheaper, the self-adjusting feature is nice. Now, the, you know, one comment would be that the teeth are a bit fine on the inside of this. It has a lot of increments, but obviously it won't take very large particles of grit to cause it to want to slip. And that's probably my biggest worry is these of the teeth starting to slip there. So I'd recommend brushing them out every once in a while. That's going to be the biggest deal is trying to prevent stuff from getting in these teeth because I'm sure once this starts slipping, it will start grinding those teeth down and ruin the pliers. And uh, so that's one takeaway. And then generally they're not very good fit and finish, which is really unfortunate. But it also makes me think that if Cobalt has these, if we hunt around online, we can probably find a better grade set of similar self-adjusting wrench pliers. Anyway, I thought these were neat and I wanted to show everybody about them, talk about them a minute. And then uh, since I had the other common styles of similar pliers, at least be able to compare to them so people can see. I will mention that these do have huge uh, comfort grips, and those actually do work out pretty well. Uh, I do like that. So anyway, I'll end this review here with uh, an addition of a new 
kind of unique design, a combination of other designer tools, the cobalt wrench pliers. And I'll ask everybody who's watching to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And to everybody who has subscribed, especially recently, I really appreciate the support. As well as the support from all my early subscribers and commenters. Those are the ones who helped build my channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.